In a different chapter, we looked at the command called QSelect. That command allows us to create a temporary selection filter for our current selection group. And it's fast and it's very simple to do. And the majority of the time, it will fit your needs. Now, the command filter is very similar, only it's a little bit more complex. And you can save those filters that you create to use them later on. These filters can be much more complex than the QSelect command can be. So let's open up the ice rink example file. Now this file has a lot of different object types in it. Lines, polylines, arcs, circles, hatch patterns, etc. Now to start the filter command, you have to type in the word filter. It's not found in the ribbon anymore. That brings up this dialog box. That's not a palette, so you can't dock it, you can't hide it, and once you open it, you can't do anything else until you finish working in it. It looks like you can stretch it from side to side to make it bigger. You can't, but you can stretch it up and down. I'm not sure why, but that's just the way it's working for me here, and it'll probably work the same way for you, I'm sure. So what you can do here is create a selection set through the select filters, and that's found right here towards the middle on the left. Click this arrow, and here are all of the possibilities of objects and object information that you can pick. So you can pick a 3D face, an arc, specific attributes from a block, which is really cool, uh, blocks themselves, block names, positions, rotations, etc. So there are a lot of different things you can pick. Not everything is listed on here, but the majority of the items are. So for example, let's say we want to find circles. So we pick circle. That adds it to the list here, but it's not up in our list. It's not added to our filter until we put it in this area. Now you do that by clicking on the Add to List button, and that adds it right up here. So this selection filter says that the object is going to be a circle. Okay, well, let's just stop here to show you how it works. Once you put your things in your filter here, you click on the Apply button. And now you go into your drawing and you select just everything. You can see the objects that are highlighted here. It picked just these circles because that's what we told it to do. Pick circles. Press enter and there you go. Now you can edit your object in their properties palette. You can hit your delete, your move, copy, rotate, etc. That's what you can do with the filter. Now that's the gist of how it works from within the filter if you start the filter first. But let's say that you want to change something or just erase. So let's start the erase command, press enter, and now you're normally going to make your selection set with the erase command. But we want to use the filter in a way that's called transparent use. So you will hit your apostrophe first, then type in the filter word. That's the command. And a transparent command will work within another command. Typically you can only do one command at a time, but some things are transparent, and the filter command is. Press enter. And that will open up our selection box here. Now, this is the last one we use, so it comes up in our selection filter. And for this case, this is what we want to do. Whatever's in here is what's going to be filtered in our selection. We'll hit apply, select everything, and we see these are the selections made. Yes, that's good. We press enter, and now we're back into the erase command. You can see that on the command line here. If I press enter again, all these circles are going to go away. All right, let's bring them back with the undo command. But that's how you use the filter command. So it's not too dissimilar from the queue select in that way. I can start with the filter or the queue select, make my selection, and then apply whatever modification tool I want to use. Or you can start the modification tool, then start the filter or the queue select, and have at it. But let's look at some more of the advanced filter options. Now you can add more than one type of criteria to it and you can save your criteria patterns here. So we can save this one and call it circle. You enter it into the box here, hit save as, and now it's in our list. And click the button here and then you go to unnamed or circle. Unnamed is just what you're working in. It has no name, it hasn't been saved, but it remembers what you did last. Now you can add more than one search criteria to the filters command. And the filters command came into AutoCAD long before QSelect did. And to be honest, QSelect is much more simple and will fit your needs more often than the filter will. But that's okay. You can use whichever one you want. 
You know, to add more criteria to your selection filter, just come down here and find the attribute that you want and you can add it. So like in this case, we could add layer. And they're all listed alphabetically here so you can find them very easily. Hit layer. And now since there are a lot of criteria for layer, you hit select. What type of layer do you want? You can select and it will show you all of the layers that are in the file. Zero, building, ice rink, ice rink, hatch, title, upper level. So you find the one you want, say ice rink in this case, click OK. So now we have layer, and it's on the ice rink layer. We hit add to list. Now we can also add in some specific circle information, like a circle center, you know, the coordinates for where it's located. Now, that one is extremely specific, so you need to be careful on things like that. And circle radius, again, is also very specific. Now, for the radius, we can type in a number. Let's say 15. Now, you have this operator over here. Right now, it defaults to equals, but we also have, you know, the less than, greater than, and less than and equal and an asterisk. That means it means it could be just about anything. It just wants to be a circle with a radius, etc. So let's say we want to find circles that are greater than 15, you know, in their radius, that is. Okay, we can add that to the list. So anything that has a radius that is greater than 15 uh, will be selected. Now we can hit Apply. And I believe all of these circles in here are greater than 15. Yes, so it picked them. Press Enter, and there's your selection. Now let's go back to the Filter command. You can see everything we had in here worked. So we have the layer that was on the ice rink. And so if, if we don't want that, we just hit the delete button once you select it. And we have a 15, uh, greater than 15 radius here. Okay, that's fantastic. I tell you, let's clear out our whole list. You can do that by clicking the clear list button. So we've cleared our list, and now we want to pick the add selected object button. It's down here on the bottom left. Now we're going to pick it and then select an object. We're going to go with our circle here. And then when you pick that object, it brings you back to your object selection filter dialog box. And it's populated the filter list with all of the criteria that it can from the selected object. So we see it's a circle. That's the object type. What layer it's on, the line type, the circle center, circle radius, the normal vector, and the color. So this selection set now will pick from all of your selections, this object or any object that fits this exact criteria. Now, the problem here is that it's only going to find one object because of the circle center coordinates right here. None of the other circles in our drawing fit this criteria. Now, we can edit this. We can you know, delete it, or we can even edit an item. And now you have your options here. We can say equals, greater than, less than, et cetera, or change the value, whatever we need to do. Or we can clear the list entirely. So now this selection set will pick all of these other circles that are in our drawing as long as they match this criteria. They're circles, they're on the ice rink layer, the line type is by layer, et cetera. Now it's good CAD practice to draw all of your objects set to a line type of by layer. Now you can use your selection filters to help fix something like that. So you can select it and you can say, you know, by layer, let's go to the edit item. And you can say it's by layer. Now let's say that you want to say everything that's not by layer. I want to make sure it's not by layer. So, well, what can you do? Well, we have a few things that we can do. Uh, normally, you know, like in the radius, if you go to edit that item, you have the equal to. You can go equal to, greater than, or less than. And so I can say that the radius is going to be less than this. Now, once you edit it, you have to hit the substitute button, and it will make the change. So this is going to pick a circle on an ice rink layer that's set to bilayer line type with a radius that's less than 15.388135 units. Okay, and You can do that, or you can use an operator. So we want it to say that it's not by layer, that the color is not by layer, that it's set to something else, okay? So we want to come in and add an operator. Now you have different operators. You have and, or, not, or XOR, which means and, or. And the and 
is going to meet one or more criteria. That means that the object you pick has to say it's a circle and an eye shrink layer and it's bilayer and it's a 15. That's essentially what you do here without those operators on it. So you don't have to use those per se, but you can. Now the or will fit also one or more criteria. It means it's going to be a circle object or it's going to be on the ice rink layer. And that means that whatever object I pick is either going to be a circle object on any layer or it's going to be an any object that's on the ice rink layer. So that's kind of cool. That gives you a lot of possibilities. Now the not means that it will not fit this criteria. So everything else but this specific criteria. So for example, that's what we want to do for objects that are not by layer. So let's clear this list out and let's add this to it. We want the color. We're going to pick our color that's not by layer. And we're going to add this to the list. So right now our filter says it's going to pick everything that's set to by layer for the color. Well, we want it to pick everything that's not by layer. We can do that in a couple of different ways. We can say here that it's less than or greater than or not equal to. We can do that here. We can also add in one of these. That's the not operators. Sometimes you have an object that doesn't have an equal to or a less than or greater than option. So you have to use these. But in this case, you're going to add them all the same way. Let's add begin not. And all of your nots, your ands, your ors, etc., have to have a begin and an end. That just tells it where to start and to stop. So you hit begin not, hit add to list. And you may have to make sure you're picked in the right spot, you're selected there. So we need to move this down. Now there's no way very easily to move something up and down. So we're going to have to remove that item. So if we pick here, we have the begin knot, and now we want to add the color. So your selection criteria order is very specific and very picky as you saw here. So if you mess up, just clear it out and just add them again. Start with the begin knot, then add the color, and now we need to add the end knot. Add to list. And now we can add anything else. So we can add like a circle or anything like that. It will look here and say it will ignore everything that is of a bilayer setting. So it will say, I want everything that is not bilayer. So if anything is not bilayer, that's what it's going to pick. Well, let's see what is in this drawing right now. I don't know for sure even if there is anything set in here to not bilayer. And Everything is set to by layer. This was done properly then. Well, let's change some of that then. Let's just pick some lines here real quick. We're going to change them. And instead of being by layer, we're going to make them red. This will make it easy to see. Let's go to our filter command again. Enter. We still have all the filter criteria here, which is nice. So we hit apply. And let's pick here. And there you go. You see, it found everything that is not by layer. Press enter. There's our selection set. And now we can go and fix it. The other operators work the same way, the and, the ors, etc. So you have to start with a begin and then finish with an end. And all the criteria that's in here will work. So you can add other things too. Let's say a line. We can add that to the list. And so now it will find all of the lines that are not by layer. Click apply, and I believe these are still the same objects, and they are. So I can keep picking, you know, everything in here. I can zoom in, zoom out, and anything that's a line that's not by layer, and the color will be selected. See, this is a block, so it ignored it. And that's filters. Now you can save the filters. You can use them for later on. You can use them for large selection sets. Say you have some points or a lot of blocks that are put in there, and you want to find all of the blocks that are called tree that are on a certain layer, you can do that. Or if you have a lot of blocks or lines or anything that are at a certain elevation or certain layers, certain line types, 
that you can find those types of things. And so filters can be very much more powerful and useful than a quick select, but they're a little bit more cumbersome to use. But that's the nice thing about the filters, you can save them to use later on.